Episode 54, The History of New Year's. History.com slash holidays slash New Year's dot com states, The earliest recorded festivities in honor of a New Year's arrival date back some 4,000 years to ancient Babylon. For the Babylonians, the first new moon following the vernal equinox, the day in late March, with an equal amount of sunlight and darkness, hurled the start of a new year. They marked the occasion with a massive religious festival called Akita, derived from the Sumerian word for barley, which was cut in the spring. That involved a different ritual on each of its 11 days. In addition to the new year, Akita celebrated the mythical victory of the Babylonian sky god Marduk over the evil sea goddess Tiamat and served an important political purpose. It was during this time that a new king was crowned or that the current ruler's divine mandate was symbolically renewed. Day one to day three of the festival, the priest of Marduk's house recited sad prayers. Day four, priests look for constellation in the northern sky to recite more prayers. Day five, the king of Babylon would come before Marduk to pray for forgiveness of his sins. The king would call him Lord, saying, I have not sinned of Lord of the universe, and I haven't neglected your heavenly might at all. Then the priest would speak as if they are Marduk and say, Don't be afraid of what Marduk has to say, for he will hear your prayers, extends your power, and increases the greatness of your reign. And this is the reason why I don't call Yeshua or Yah Lord. Lord means Baal. Day 6 the god of Nabu, the ancient Mesopotamian god of literacy, arts, scribes, and wisdom arrives. Day 7, Nabu frees Marduk. Day 8, all the gods honor Marduk. Day 9, a parade takes place of Marduk's victory in the beginning of creation over the dragon Tiamat. They march to the house of Atika or Bet Igribi, which was called by the Assyrians of Nineveh, house of prayers. Day 10, they arrive at Bet Igribe, or House of Prayers, to celebrate the gods and the marriage of Marduk and Ishtar. Day 11, Marduk and the gods renew their covenant with Babylon. Day 12, the gods return to Marduk's temple and life resumes in Babylon, Nineveh, and Assyria. Babylon was a state in ancient Mesopotamia, and historians note that the Sumerians of Mesopotamia to be the first to celebrate this festival around late 2000 BC. They would celebrate in the first month of the year, which was during barley season around March, April. And if you follow our podcast, we know that in Exodus 23 and 15 and Deuteronomy 16 and 1, Yah told the children of Israel to observe Passover in the first month of the year, the month of Abib, which is barley season during the end of March, April. And would you know, this grand festival would take place to worship and pray to other gods during our holy days and our first month of our new year. And after the flood, we can pretty much always trace paganism and sordid evil back to Cush's son, Nimrod. Genesis 10, 8 through 10. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yah. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yah. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erich, Akkad, and Kalni, in the land of Shinar. All of these areas are known to be in ancient Mesopotamia. Out of that land went forth Ashur, the Assyrians, and builded Nineveh, and the city Rohabat and Kala. Now who is a part of this Atika festival? The descendants and the followers of Nimrod. And we learned in an earlier podcast that one of the sons of Japheth married an Israelite and lived in Mesopotamia. Jasher 9 and 21. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great man took counsel together. Put Mishterim, Cush, and Canaan with their families. And they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven. And we will make ourselves famed, so that we may reign upon the whole earth, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us, that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars." 
Historians state this Babylonian and Assyrian Akita festival helped develop the theories of religion, myth, and ritual and played a pivotal role in the advancement of Western civilization. Fast forward to 46 BC and Julius Caesar, the emperor, creates the Julian calendar. The Greeks took over Egypt and surrounding areas from the 300 BCs to 30 BC. And after them, the Romans took over and everything else as well. Julian wanted to realign the Roman calendar with the sun. So he added 90 extra days to the year 46 BC and introduced his new Julian calendar to the god of Janus. History.com states, over the centuries, the calendar fell out of sync with the sun, and in 46 BC, the emperor Julius Caesar decided to solve the problem by consulting with the most prominent astronomers and mathematicians of his time. He introduced a Julian calendar, which closely resembles the more modern Gregorian calendar that most countries around the world use today. As part of his reform, Caesar instituted January 1st as the first day of the year, partly to honor the month's namesake, Janus the Roman god of beginnings, whose two faces allowed him to look back into the past and forward into the future. Romans celebrated by offering sacrifices to Janus, exchanging gifts with one another, decorating their homes with laurel branches and attending raucous parties. GreekMythology.com states, Janus was the god of beginnings and transitions in Roman mythology and presided over passages, doors, gates, and endings, as well as in transitional periods such as from war to peace. He was usually depicted as having two faces looking at opposite ways, one towards the past and the other towards the future. In celebrating New Year's, revelers often enjoyed meals and snacks thought to bestow good luck for the coming year. Other customs that are common worldwide include watching fireworks and singing songs to welcome the new year, including the ever popular Auld Lang Sing in many English speaking countries. Its lyrics, which rhetorically ask whether Auld acquaintance should be forgotten, have been interpreted as a call to remember friends and experiences from the past. The practice of making resolutions for the new year is thought to have first caught on among the ancient Babylonians who made promises in order to earn the favor of the gods and start the year off on the right foot. They would reportedly vow to pay off debts and return borrowed farm equipment. Sons of Vikings.com states, at the Yule feast, Vikings would burn large logs of oak inscribed with the runs for good fortune in the coming year. Oak is the hardest of woods, and so these logs would burn very long and hot throughout the night to gladden the feast and to chase the darkness away. Christmas and New Year are the main times of the year that conspicuous drinking of alcohol becomes more socially acceptable. The Vikings celebrated Yule with nights on end of drinking med and specially brewed ales from animal horns and sometimes the skulls of their enemies. From the days of the Antica Festival, we come now to the 12 days of Yuletide, the 12 days of Christmas, 12 days of the Winter Solace, which begins approximately around December the 21st and runs for 12 days until the end of the year. The Attica Festival New Year began the end of March, April, but Emperor Caesar added 90 days to the calendar. So now the new year is in December. Mojunate was an Anglo-Saxon celebration called Mother's Night. It took place during the Yuletide. They would stay up all night making sacrifices and feast. It was a time to honor the ancestral female deities or goddesses like Desir. These goddesses would oversee, influence, and protect the family. In fact, there are thousands of archaeological records of stone monuments honoring matrons or female spirits in Germany and across Europe. Now, is this where the women's movement is coming from? Think. 
Mother's Night began the first day of Yule, or the last day, but whatever day it was, they celebrated the new year. Twelve days of Yule were Day 1, December the 20th, Mother's Night to celebrate Desir, Frigg, and other female gods. They prayed to the female goddesses that embodied powers of motherhood and protective feminine spirits. Day 2, December the 21st, Winter Solace begins, celebrating the longest night of the year and the return of the sun. Day 3, December the 22nd, they honor the gods of fear and all far, known as the elves, and they brought in the boar to make their Yule oats. Day 4, December the 23rd, the last day of Saturnalia, per the Roman calendar, social rules were turned upside down, gifts were exchanged, and disguises were worn. They honored the Loki, the lord of misrule, and his wife, Sigen. Day 5, December the 24th, they prayed to Odin, and we learned this is where Santa Claus and the reindeer riding on the sleigh came from. Day 6, December the 25th, they honor Odin's wife and Baldur, their child, who was dying but was resurrected. Day 7, December the 26th, they honor Kerry, the giant of the wind, and brother Eager, the sea god, and Logi, the wildfire. Kerry had two sons. Frosty or Frost and Jokel or Glacier. Glacier fathered Snare or Snow. Snow is the father of winter. He had three daughters named Majol or Powdered Snow, Drifa or Snowfall, and Fond or Snowdrift. This brings to mind Frosty the Snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corncob pipe and a button nose and two eyes made of coal. Day 8. December the 27th, they honor Scotty, the snowshoe goddess in Olur. Day 9, December the 28th, they pray to Nor, the god of wealth of the ocean and trade. Day 10, December the 29th, they honor Feya, the lady of love, prosperity, and magic. Day 11, December the 30th, they honor Eodun and her husband, Bragi, by making wassailing and singing for the fertility of a fruit tree and for good luck in the coming year. Day 12, December the 31st, they honor poor and Sif, as well as blessed their house for protection and for driving out the last of the wandering Yule spirits who were still between the worlds. It was traditional to end the Yule festivities by chasing the Yule out. Okay. They spiritually and physically cleanse their houses by burning herbs. At midnight, they would bang pots and pans, making sure to drive out all the lingering spirits of Yule. WYRDDesigns.com, the 12 days of Yule, states, While some heathens may simply book in Yule with Mother's Night and the Twelfth Night and not have specific observances in between those days, there are some other heathens who have taken things a step further by pulling inspiration from the nine noble virtues and combining it with candle lighting celebrations like Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. They have come up with a reason to light a candle every night during the Yuletide. Listen well. There are few variations out there. Some focus on different gods, on different nights instead of the virtues. Day 1, Mother's Night. Day 2, the Winter Solace. Day 3, Virtue, Courage. Day 4, Virtue, Truth. Day 5, Virtue, Honor. Day 6, Virtue, Fidelity. Day 7, Virtue, Hospitality. Day 8, Virtue, Discipline. Day 9, Virtue, Industriousness. Day 10, Virtue, Self-Reliance. Day 11, Virtue, Perseverance. Day 12, Twelfth Night, WRDDesigns.com states, Considering we have dozens upon dozens of deities, I think it's a far better use of the Yuletide to dedicate the Yuletide not to the modern virtues created as a codified listing of values to be like a Ten Commandments to teach others about our religion, but rather it spend it in connection with the gods and goddesses from our tradition. What? The 12 days of Yule, or the 12 days of Christmas, ushered in a new year of good fortune and the end of winter, for harvest was soon to come. The tradition of the 12 days of Yule, 12 days of Christmas, or 12 days of the winter solace, can be traced back to Nimrod and the celebration of the Attica festival, bringing in the new year, worshiping pagan gods, and celebrating however they wanted. 
But what we have failed to realize is this. People have a history, but things, traditions, customs, lands, buildings, etc. also have a history and we need to do the work to research that history and its roots. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also reject thee, that thou should be no priest to me. Seen thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. As we seek truth, please seek truth with us. Please send questions or comments to info at truthwars.com or come at here. We don't claim to know everything. We just seek the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that knows everything. Let truth roar. Let truth reign. Let truth speak. And let truth set you and your entire family free. Truth roars. Truth reigns. Truth speaks. Truth sets me free. Please see a podcast disclaimer at truthwars.com.